This is CPM Precalculus Chapter 3, number 81. So here we have two functions. f of x is equal to x squared, and g of x is equal to negative x squared plus 2x minus 4. All right? <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do part A. A says find the points where the graphs f of x and g of x intersect. So that's where they meet. Okay? So let's go ahead and do this part. Um, before we go ahead and do it algebraically, I want to look at the graphs, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and graph x squared here, and y2 I'm going to make g of x negative x squared plus 2x plus 4, just to see that they intersect in two different places, okay? So here's x squared, and here's g of x going downwards as a parabola, I can see that there are two intersection points, right? There's one here and one here. So how are we going to find those places algebraically? So where they intersect, we know that the functions equal to each other, okay? So f of x is equal to g of x. And this is going to be where they intersect is where they equal to each other, all right? So let's go ahead and replace f of x with what it is. It's equal to x squared. And g of x with what it is, it's equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 4. All right. Now we have an equation here. And if you look at it, the highest power is 2. So let's go ahead and add x squared to both sides. And we get 2x squared equals to 2x plus 4 because these cancel out. And now if you look at it, <clears throat> let's go ahead and subtract 2x and 4 from both sides. You might have done this already because what we notice is we're going to have a quadratic equation equal, equaling 0. From here we want to solve for x because we know that this equation equals to 0. Well, wherever x, whatever x is in this equation is true is where the two graphs intersect because that's where f of x and g of x are equal to each other. So now we want to do what we want to do is solve for x, right? When to solve for x, we can use the quadratic equation or we can use factoring. Okay, um, whichever way is easier for you. Some of you might even have the program in your calculator to do the quadratic equation. Um, but as you can see, I don't, so I'm not going to try to do it that way. But I'm going to do factoring. So first I'm going to factor out from each term here is a 2. I'm going to factor out 2. I'm left with x squared here. I'm left with just x here. And here I'm left with 2, right? Because I divided each term by 2. So now I have 2 times x squared minus x minus 2 equals to 0. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 2 because these two are going to cancel out. And 0 divided by 2, well, that's still 0. Okay, so now I have x squared minus x minus 2 equals to 0. And that simplifies things a lot. I could, again, I could stop here and do quadratic formula here. Right? I can use the quadratic equation to solve this quadratic. Or I can even do it here. I could go ahead and solve this right, with the quadratic equation as well. But like I said, I want to factor. Um, I'm going to use the method looking for two terms that multiply to get to negative 2 and add to get to negative 1. So add to get to negative 2, multiply. I mean, add to get to negative 1, multiply to get to negative 2 right and <clears throat> those numbers are going to be negative 2 and positive 1 because negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 2 negative 2 plus positive 1 is negative 1 so that's going to allow me to factor this as x plus 1 plus 1 is here times x minus 2 minus 2 is here and if you're not sure about this you can go ahead and multiply this out using distribution to get what we had originally. Okay, so I'm going to put this in a little bubble or a cloud because this right here is just factoring work. Okay, 
So since this equation equals to 0 and we're multiplying these two terms, I can go ahead and say either this term x plus 1 equals to 0, right? They're equal to 0. Or x minus 2 equals to 0. Solving this, I subtract 1 from both sides. x equals to negative 1. Or solving this one, add 2 to both sides. Or x is equal to 2. Okay? So this tells me what? Remember, this tells me where they intersect. And let's go ahead and make sure we have the question. We want to look for the points where the graphs intersect. Okay? So right now we have two x values. But we want to have points. We want to have x comma y points, right? So we know here x is equal to negative 1. What is f of negative 1? Right? We're going to get the y value. So I can even say y is equal to f of negative 1, which is, so looking at f of x, right? f of x is just x squared. And negative 1, so f of negative 1 would be negative 1 squared, which is going to be just positive 1. So this gives me the point x comma y. Well, x is negative 1, and y is 1. So this is one point where the two graphs intersect. Okay, The other point is at x is equal to 2. Right? We have x is equal to negative 1 or x is equal to 2. So at x is equal to 2, y is equal to f of 2. Okay, and you might be wondering, well, why am I using f of, f of x here and plugging it in? Well, since both f of x, I want to put a reminder here in a cloud, f of x equals g of x, right, at these two points. At x is equal to negative 1 or x is equal to 2, this is true. So I can go ahead and use f of negative 1 or I could have said g of negative 1 and it would still give me the output of 1. Likewise, here I could say f of 2 or g of 2, and it's still going to give me the same output. And I'm using f of x because if you look at these, f of x is x squared, and g of x is negative x squared plus 2x plus 4. Calculating x squared is going to be much faster and simpler. Okay, So f of 2 is just going to be 2 squared, and that's equal to 4. So that gives me the point 2 comma 4. Okay, this gives me the point one, negative 1, comma 1. So these are the two points where the graphs intersect, right? Where they intersect. Okay, so if I go ahead and look at the graph again, um, which I already did. So if we look at the graph again, we can say that, oh, here and here are where they intersect. And actually, um, if you go second calculate, so you're going to use the yellow calculate above trace. Second calculate, you're going to be able to find the, the option to calculate an intersection. Okay? So when you're, I'm just showing you how to do it graphically with your calculator. It's going to ask you the first curve because we have two different curves. Sometimes we graph multiple curves, but we're, we're going to find the intersection of two. So it's going to say, well, which one's the first curve? So I'm going to move my cursor. I know I'm on the upward parabola, x squared. I'm going to say that's the first curve. The second curve is going to be this one. Yes, go, the one going down that parabola. And it's going to say, guess where the intersection is. Well, I'm going to say, well, this is my guess over here. And it's going to tell me exactly the intersection point. Negative 1 is x. Y is positive 1, just like we found here. Okay. So this is doing it graphically. You can do it the same way to find this point here, 2, 4. But this is going to be over here is algebraically. We're using algebra, algebraically. And over here in our graphing calculator, we did it graphically. Okay, so let's just make sure we know two, two different methods to do that. So that's part A. Part B says use your calculator's area program, right? Use the area program on your calculator to find the area of the region between the graphs. And it even says think before you start pushing buttons. Okay. So the thinking I want to do is to just look at the two graphs. All right. So here is f of x we know is x squared. Right. 
So I'm going to just say that's f of x. And in green, I'm going to draw g of x, which is negative x squared. Um, which is negative x squared, what was it, plus 2x plus 4. Okay, so in green here is g of x. And we're asked for part b is to find the area between the graphs, right? So our goal is to find this area here in, in pink, right, just this region. Well, what we could do, right, is find, <clears throat> so thinking about it is, well, we could find the area under the blue graph, right? We could find the area under f of x using our function, right? And that's this region here. And we could also find the area under g of x, the green graph, which is going to be this whole entire region here is underneath. And our boundary is going to be starting at, well, luckily we found the intersections already. It's going to be starting at negative 1, 1. So the x value here is negative 1. And we're going all the way to 2, 4 where they intersect. So the x value here is 2. So our boundaries are negative 1 and 2. So under g of x, right, we, we could go ahead and say, um, well, let's go ahead and write this out. The area under our function f of x between negative 1 and 2 is here in blue, right? We just have this region underneath the parabola. And the area under g of x is in green here, the whole thing, between negative 1 and 2 as well. So how do we find just the pink here? Let me slash these to the right. How do we find just the pink area? Well, the thinking part is to look and note that this is just the area in green, right? The whole thing minus what's here in blue. Right? If we subtract out what's in blue, we're going to get just the pink. Okay. So if we go ahead and say the area, oh, let me make sure I write this, the area um, between, so bet between f of x and g of x from negative 1 to 2, that's going to equal... Again, the whole thing, well, for, if we look at the whole thing underneath green is the area, I'll, I'll even write it in green, the area under g of x from, one to, from negative 1 to 2 minus, right, subtract out that blue region, minus the area under f of x between negative 1 and 2. Okay? So this is the crucial thing to consider to get the area between. We're subtracting the area from the one above. We're taking the area from the um, graph above, subtracting out the area from the graph below, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and use our, our area function. Our program is called curve area, right? So let's run it. Function, well, I'm going to do g of x first. So let's say, well, that's equal to the area under g of x. Well, remember, g of x was negative x squared plus 2x plus 4, right? If you want to check with me, you can look at your, your um, the question. Negative x squared plus 2x plus 4, yes. And we're going to start from, remember, we're going from negative 1 to 2. So A is negative 1, B is 2. And N is how many rectangles are we going to do? Well, we want to get as close to the actual number as possible. So we want a large number of rectangles. So we're approximating here. So let me go ahead and to show that. Let's say it's approximately. And I'm going to go ahead and say, I don't know, 50, right? You can use any number you want, but the higher, the larger the number is, the more accurate um, your answer is going to be. Now, 50 is, see, a pretty big number. And remember, this gives me 
the area using left endpoint rectangles, right endpoint rectangles, trapezoid, and midpoint. Okay, so you can choose one of them, right? I'm going to choose trapezoids, so I'm going to just say it's 11.9982, right? That's for the, the area in green here. Minus, and then I'm going to do the program again, but this time calculate it with f of x, which is just a function x squared, from negative 1 to 2. And I want to use 50 rectangles again. And I'm going to again use the, the trapezoid representation, which is three point, it's the third one, right? I use left endpoint, right endpoint, trapezoid, then midpoint. So it's 3.0018. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract that 11.9982 minus 3.0018. And that gives me approximately. 8.9964 and again the units are area so it's units squared all right so that again is the area between f of x and g of x and our region we found by looking at the x values of where they intersect okay now how will we get the exact area well i want to go ahead and kind of look at this because just because we kind of touched on it already in another problem. Um, we looked at a different representation of area. Um, area, because this one we're just taking g of x minus f of x. So we could even write that as g of x minus f of x, like this. Let me move the calculator down for a second. Between negative 1 and 2, right? That's how we could write it. But we also learned that we can write it as this symbol, and instead of writing negative 1 and 2 anywhere else, we write it at the bottom of the symbol and the top of this symbol. This is called the integral symbol. We're going to learn it later. And then in parentheses, I'm going to write g of x minus f of x. And then over here we have dx. Okay, we'll talk about what this means exactly. Right now we're just looking at it for a different representation of this. And why I'm going to write it like that is because we can go ahead and put it in our calculator like this, and it's going to give us the exact area. So this is now looking at exact below, right? Not estimating it. So this is the first time we'll be looking at this. Um, so in your calculator, you push the math key, and you go down, I think it's number 9. Yeah, number 9, it's F-N-I-N-T. Okay? So this is the same thing in your calculator as writing the f-n-i-n-t and that's int stands for integral f-n i think it either stands for function or finite because this is the definite integral we'll talk about that again in the future and here we want to give it g of x minus f of x well g of x remember is negative x squared plus 2x right plus 4 f of x, so we want to subtract f of x, and f of x is just x squared, so I'm going to write it as x squared. Comma, so we want, so when we give this, we want to actually put the functions in g of x minus f of x, comma x, comma our boundaries a to b. So comma x is our variable, comma a, comma b. And a, remember, was negative 1 here, so comma negative 1 comma b is 2. Close that parentheses and this is going to tell us the exact area. And see how fast it was? It's just 9 and again it's units squared. Okay, so our calculator can do the exact area um, and we're able to estimate the area pretty close to 9. It's 8.9964 units squared and the ex exact area is 9 units squared. Okay, so for now we're okay with approximating. In the future, we're going to understand what this is, and it's going to be, like we did on our calculator, much faster. Okay, I'm going to write faster. All right? It's even faster to do in your calculator, but your calculator computes it faster, too, and there's a reason why. All right.
So that's going to end for us CPM Precalculus Chapter 3, Number 81.